This is the One Step Better Podcast. Helping small businesses make wins each and every week. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of the One Step Better Podcast. I'm Mike Schaefer. With me today, uh, like most days, is our good friend, Matt Patrick. Matt, welcome. Hey, man. Uh, if you're on? watching us on YouTube, you'll notice that Matt's rocking a new look. He's got some glasses on. He's got some scruff going. We're twinning today. We got Yeah, we, we planned our outfits together. So, yeah. you know, I think it's just all signs that this is going to be a really good podcast. I can only wait. So what are we talking about today, Matt? Do you know? Is software enough, right? <laughs> I software. Think software. The idea of, of how this all ties together with software and what we do and all kinds of fun stuff. So, yeah, yeah it so, should be fun. Uh, you know, a lot of times uh, as we get into conversations with different peer groups or whatever, uh, in some ways we're seen as, I don't know, maybe leading – on the leading edge, or a little bit maybe further along, as when it comes to using technology and leveraging software to do different things, um, and that can be a good thing, but it also can produce a lot, a lot, a lot of problems. And so, today we're going to talk through some of the benefits of of using software, what that actually means, how you can implement those things uh, in a way that makes sense, expectation setting, and uh, and really some of the the downfalls and where you can find yourself in trouble. And so, if you um, uh, run a business, own a business, or even are remotely involved in any type of organization, uh, it's here, here's why you should listen today. Everybody in the world is trying to find ways to shortcut systems, processes to make their lives easier. And a lot of times, software is at the heart of that. Uh, and we're going to talk through ways in which you can find technology and use technology to do some of that stuff, but also some of the places that maybe you should avoid uh, using technology too heavily in. So that's that's the goal today. But before we get into that too far, um, our icebreaker question where we want to start something a little more lighthearted is, Matt, what's something that you've tried to be good at? Something that you, maybe a hobby, something you like to do, try to be good at, but it just doesn't click. Well, start with this. I'm pretty much awesome at everything. No, that's right. I'm not. Uh, clearly not. What does it mean when you say it doesn't click? I've never experienced <laughs> that before. Um, I, I would love to be uh, handy. There's things I am very handy on, and if it's something about figuring stuff out, I can do it. But, like, I hate, like, hanging stuff on the walls or, like, having to fix something that I don't, like – the dishwasher or the refrigerator or something like that would break. These would are things that you can do, you just don't like to do, or no, these no, are things no. you're not, not good at? I'm not very good at it. Really? Putting, like, toys together at Christmas time, super frustrating. Like, yeah. I get it done. It's super <laughs> painful. I wish I was better at it. Like, I don't go to Ikea for a reason. Thank I, goodness the kids are out of the age of getting. If I can't buy it already put together, I don't want it. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's funny. That's that. That's probably one. Um would you like to do like electrical plumbing, that type of handiwork, or I do is it a more bit just of plumbing odds and ends? Now, electrical, I'm pretty much I turn the stuff off at the break, main breaker and yeah. start from there. <laughs> so it, it's a lot more work than I want to be. Yeah, that's interesting. One of you? the things that I wished I was better at, and I feel like I should oh, be better at another one: golf, Pati- patience. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it just doesn't click. It doesn't click. I don't, I don't get, get it. it. I make decisions and then I think about them after (laughs) (laughs) no mine's golf Uh, Uh, i I think it's everybody i play golf very rarely maybe a couple times a year but i feel like whenever i do go play golf i should be tiger woods in his prime Uh, i don't put in any work to actually make that happen but i feel like it just feels like that's a little ball and I have a big club, and I know how to swing things. That's not our question, though. Therefore, it should work. Yes. It's what's what something, something you've you tried, tried to be good at. I've tried to be good at golf. I don't practice. I don't do anything to make myself better. How did you make your – walk me through that well, logic again. there's a slash here on the question <laughs> that okay. says you don't have the natural talent to do I, it. So I, maybe, that may be true. Maybe yeah. that's where I got I do not have the natural talent either. Yeah. I uh, I haven't really put any effort into being I good. I want to be good at I golf. would like to be good at golf, and I'm not good at golf, and I have not done anything to make myself better, really, other than go to play golf. I have tried some things to make oh, myself better. It's hard. I did. Um, I got the golf magazine once. Well, that counts. Like yeah. a subscription Clearly. thing, and I read it. Wow. And I like there's times in which I'm reading that thing. It's like I'm I really, don't even know what those words mean. I'm really good on, on like, Tiger Woods golf on, right? on Xbox. We golf. 
Heck, we golf them pretty good there, yeah, but not in real life yeah. so much. You know, one of the things that I try to do that I thought would be a lot of fun is that you have those simulator, golf simulator oh, yeah. things. You can go sit in the bay and hit it and it tells you, all right, your ball went so and so far and it went in this direction, all that type of stuff. And I really thought that that software would yeah. actually help my game. And you know what? It didn't. We lost your ball. <laughs> we lost your ball. It didn't it's at all. off the grid. I thought that it was going to change things. I thought it was no, going to tell me very... all of the – True. All the things it's about magic. Yeah, I thought it was magic. I thought it was just gonna like we put this in. It's gonna tell me these are all the things you need to adjust and change, and it didn't. It didn't do that. It just simply said, "Yeah, you are pretty bad at this." Correct. That was my takeaway. And until I, you know, if if that's the big big word here, if I would have taken that knowledge and maybe paired it with golf instructors who actually know how to use that information, it might have done something. But yeah, it, but it didn't because I didn't go that far that's down the road. A- Amazing, Mike. I'm just blown away by how you're able to think through the software that way. And a lot of times, uh, technology will do that to you. It'll it'll make you think like there's a magic pill out there. And you know what one of my frustrations is? Um, in today's world, so you think about late 90s, early 2000s, um, SaaS became a thing, software as a service, and companies started releasing software that just even started to explode uh, more and more as we get uh, into 2022. And it turned into, if you buy my thing, my product, my software, whatever it is, then things are going to be better. And that is a mantra. It's a drum that gets beat from software salespeople all the time. If you buy my thing, your life is going to be better. And there are a few things that frustrate me more than that idea. I, they're just not explaining it well, right? That's the problem. The right is the thing that they're selling you will make their life better. It can. With, if. Yeah. You, like there's a number of co- conjunctions in terms of English that have to happen with that. It's very. If you use it, if you know how to use it well, if you create a system around it. Yeah. It's, it's just a hammer. It is. It's a tool. It's just a hammer. And you can give me all the tools in the world, but if you expect me to build you a piece of furniture that is great you're going to be disappointed and Correct. that's what that's what technology and that's what software does is because there's so many times that salespeople will and i don't want to beat on salespeople but the reality is that's who drives yeah, the bus be, a lot let's of beat times. on let's beat on no, right they'll, they'll come in and shelby's say hey you know yeah shelby's not here um this is the tool this is what it can do all that cool stuff um and do you want to buy it mm-hmm. and then it's like yeah I, I definitely want the outcomes that you're talking about and a great salesperson will talk you through the process that you're going to go through to get those outcomes. But a normal salesperson is going to say, here's, here's the it. contract, sign here, and let's let's Here's move the magic on. bullet. Yep. And we, that's frustrating. And we've been, we've been there as a buyer. Um, we've been there with our clients who think what we've sold them is this magic pill. Um, you know, I've, I have unfortunately bought a number of things that I hope would get me to where I'm trying to fix my problem. And... I get into it and go, this is not going to fix my problem. I either don't have the capacity to learn it. Yeah. I don't have the knowledge of how the, the logic of the system works. Um, it doesn't fix the problem I was actually trying to fix, which happens more often than not. Um, and so creates pain as well as um, a little brain damage along the way to get you there. And then you end up feel like you just flushed your money down the drain. Yeah. And I want to kind of dive into why those things occur. Because really, there's there's two ways in which you're going to buy software in today's world. One is, you know, you, you get a friend who maybe is using something, they've talked about it, you think, oh, that sounds cool, and you start to, you know, go down that same path because it worked for that person. Uh, another may be you just are someday thinking through, you know, and dreaming about what can be, and it hits your desk of, hey, you know what, maybe there is something out there, and you start to go down the deep hole of research to figure something out. You end up connecting with a salesperson or marketing people that's going to start sending you stuff and you eventually buy. Both of those avenues is really contingent upon your ability to understand what you need fully, how it's going to impact your entire organization. And a lot of times your skill set and abilities in actually implementing those things. And so a lot of times whenever software doesn't fix your problems, you have to look in the mirror it's to some probably extent. probably not a software problem. It's, yeah, a lot of times it's either I didn't understand the scope of what I was actually needing, I didn't understand the problem I was trying to solve, I didn't understand the time frame in which it was going to take to get to that outcome. A lot of times it's me-centered. I, oh, yeah. I didn't do something right. I agree with that. Um, we run into this a lot with um, 
in our world, you know, in the accounting space with a lot of accounting firms, I see owners, other owners that have a problem that they think the software is going to fix, but they're not really willing to dig in enough to know how the logic of that system works, how the implementation of that system works. Um, you know, do they do they really have the capacity to both time and the physical or mental capacity to handle the amount of work it's going to take to get them there? Um, do they like tinkering with it enough to figure it out? Or is it just, oh, I'm going to, oh, I hope it worked perfectly out of the box. It never works perfectly out of the yeah. box. There are a few enterprise grade type stuff that does work great out of the box. It takes a lot of work to get to that point. Yeah, it's a big deal. Yeah. I mean, it's a big we Big deal hurdle. with this. So like, I mean, some of the clients that we're working with uh, in, in within our works division of whether it's a restaurant or whether it's those home care agencies that, that you know, we work closely with, they have some type of, uh, it's a, it's not a CRM, but we're, we'll use this term CRM. Like it may be a point of sale system mm-hmm. where all their stuff is stored. If it's a restaurant, it may be an agency ma- management system. It may be practice management systems. It's some type of centralized place that everybody uses. And a question that we get often is, hey, do you work with that company or do you work with that technology? And almost 100% of the time, my answer is always, well, it depends. Yeah. Because the the do you work with that technology is such a more broad question than... Yeah, that exports out to Excel and I can import from Excel, therefore I work with your company. Right. Or, no, 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 there's no direct integration between these two things. Yeah. And you define your level, terms. You're in level two, and in order to make the integrate, it's a level 47, and you're a long way of level 47 yeah. for us to make this integrate. Yeah, and a lot of times what we run into is whenever you implemented that piece, you didn't think through how it may talk to other systems, and therefore you didn't actually put in the work to get all of your database stuff, and I don't want to get too yeah, technical, but correct. all your stuff right, uh, t- so that those things You're can talking in talk. French and it speaks in Spanish. Yeah, those may be close, but they're not the same. Yeah, and so maybe we need to do something in between those correct. things. And and, and it, it it really is because. The I think especially if you're a visionary type person that is idealistic and you, and you want to tinker with things and you want to make changes, you are starting with a vision of what that finished product is. And a lot of times it's easy to skip over steps one through 100 to get there. Oh, yeah. And it's going to be frustrating. Like, yeah, hey, and I, it didn't I, work. I mean, I've over the history of the firm, I've probably tried eight different practice management softwares. I got to the point over time where all those were functioning Still, other pieces are broken. Um, you know, we were a firm that used a particular software for a long time, and I thought that that was kind of our like it was dialed in. We did that really, really well. We had good guidance on how to use it. We were able to to we we understood its language. We then switched to another one now, which I think is awesome, but it is a work in process, and we're not there yet. And I and I go at some point. Am I getting too frustrated with it? Is the speed at which I'm willing to adopt it working the way I want it to? And it really fixed the problem I was trying to fix, yeah. which is I struggle with that is the – what we were able to do was good, but it wasn't – I thought there was some potential we could have improved upon. I didn't have an alternative, and so that's kind of where we've gone to. And I think that's similar to how people think through software a lot of times. I'm, I have a pain, I have a specific pain I'm trying to solve, but may not be comprehensive enough of all the other pains I already have. Yeah. Yeah. And so let's talk to you a little bit about – ways that we, we can make those implementations or even research a little bit easier. Yep. I think the first thing I, I start with is you have to really start with the end in mind. And what I, what I mean by that is you cannot start with this software is going to fix this specific problem. That's a great thing that you have to think about somewhere, but you have to go bigger than that and broader than that. What does the end outcome, what is the end product once this is fully up and running, what does that look like across my entire organization? Because most of the time, if you're a business owner that's trying to implement some type of change and it's related to technology, it's not going to be department specific. It's not going to be team specific. It probably touches you know, multiple groups of people inside of your organization. And so what does that look like from the whole perspective? I have to be broad and, and deep about what I'm thinking through and have that as a vision. And then once you have that, then you can start to scale back into what problem does it fix? And even more important than that, what problem, you know, what, what problem is it going to create? Um, Correct. Because a lot of we'll run into this. Hey, this new technology fixes this one problem. But I broke three others. But I broke three others. <laughs> yep. And we had this happen recently with a client who was switching. They bought this new software without consulting us first. 
And they're like, well, this makes me change. I'm like, yeah, it makes you change your whole, in our world was day of the change from one version of QuickBooks to another. I'm like, and how you were doing it before is no longer an option. How are we going to get around that? And they're like, well, I, I need to do that one. I'm like, well, that's not an option because you already made a decision. And so now our, our ability is, what's, what was your, why did you make the decision in the beginning? And so I, I agree with you a thousand percent. Like I think through how a client implements with us on the work side is, you know, our first thing is get them as apples to apples as possible, which yeah. is just, hey, we haven't made any improvement yet. We literally just turn one light switch off and another light switch on. And that's all we're trying to do in the very beginning. But going a step further with that, though, is what are you? Tr- why did you want to do this change? What, what's our end result? How does your whole system talk to another? What is the software that – what pains did you have that you weren't able to solve that you're now able to because you've gone through a better plan of what, they, what you want the end result to be? Um, and it's going to – you have to be willing to adapt and, and, and use some – because not every software has the same logic language. They all don't have the same, you know, all the same bells and whistles. But at the end of the day, it's all about that result at the end of the day. Something to... will be different. It Correct. Will, it will cause change. This episode of One Step Better is brought to you by Works, a team of payroll and HR experts who help businesses with outsourced HR, payroll, and human capital management solutions. Works is software and service combining awesome people with the best technology to help you and your team get one step better every day. Check out our website, works.com, to explore more employer resources. I think once you have that idea of what the end product looks like, when the end goal looks like, then it's important to bring the right people onto that conversation so that they can help you think through the implementation piece of this. What are the things that that affects them in their day-to-day that maybe doesn't affect me on my day-to-day so they care more about the granular details? Um, And all of this stuff is generally happening while you're probably some point in the sales process. Like you may, to use us as an example, you, um, if you're evaluating stuff, you're looking at all these things, but at some point you're going to say something along the lines of, hey, other people, whoever that is on our team, that makes sense. What is, how does this look? What is this going to do? How is it going to you know, impact everything? Because the people that use that software on a day-to-day basis is going to have a very different opinion. Yeah, my, my rollout for software today is very different than it used to be. Obviously, it used to be I just would try something and, okay, we'll keep trying it till I give up and then we'll stop. Nowadays, I really do have to look at how this impacts a lot of other people than just besides me. But also, is this something that is, and I'm looking for scalability, like is this something that our whole team can use? Is this a client niche? Is this a new opportunity that we haven't right. thought about before? And so as we've rolled out new software, and we're always kind of trying new stuff, we have, in my mind, I, I'm the R&D department. I'll test it with our own data, test client, um, sample data. And then I'm like, okay, let's look at this with, five clients what does this look like or here's what i'm trying to get to does this deliverable even look like it's something we would actually use is this technology that we can plug in and then i'll start getting because i'll ask a staff to look at on a certain client basis or i'll ask kim and for instance on the hey can you think of a group of clients this yeah. may be if someone want to test this for and we'll test it internally think about rolling it out then we slowly but surely get it to the whole team where we want to get them to adopt it. Um, we're trying to break it all along we want to find i want to see limits. Where, what, yeah, what, what is the thing do? that this does not work yeah yeah. And then generally I start working with the vendor to say, am I thinking through this right? Uh, is there a way I'm missing this? Do I understand how it works? And then I create a game plan from there and go and we have a rollout plan. But I, I'm assuming when we bring on a payroll client, Mike, it's the same kind of thing. Is okay, what, what is we are doing first a very heavy needs analysis of what you're doing today. But then what is the goal you're trying to get to and yeah. with this change? What are you not able to do that you wish you could do? Yeah, and our goal is to, on, on our end, my team is – thinking through and talking to our clients about what change means in their world to try to implement these things. An easy example, maybe, you know, you may come to us for payroll and timekeeping services, and that's the the big thing that, that you really care about. And as we get into this, we may identify, hey, you know what, it would be really easy for you to also just do all your PTO management inside of our stuff as well. Uh, Because your team is already going to be familiar with how everything works. It doesn't look or feel anything different. So the learning curve for your employees is not any higher. Uh, And it's also going to be, you know, a little bit easier for you to use. One less Excel spreadsheet for you to manage. Yep. And But we know if they say, hey, you know what, that end outcome of everything is automated and everything is in one spot and, and all that. I love that end outcome. Our next conversation is, okay, that's great. We can do this for you. 
this is what change is going to look like for you. <laughs> yep. That means that your employees are going to have to behave this way and your management team or whoever is going to be behaving this way within our systems. So there's a training component to that. There's an understanding component to that. Are you, you on board with those things? Because if you, if you count the cost of change and you're okay with it, then that end outcome looks to be a lot easier oh, versus, yeah. hey, you know what? I do like that outcome, but I also am not willing to you know, give my team another thing to know. Right. And that's a perfectly fine answer because that may be true today. It may not be true in a month from now. Correct. And so I would rather you say, hey, I want to get here, but now is not the time versus I want to get there now. And then it turn into, yeah, I really didn't mean that. Yeah. I like the idea of roadmap there as opposed to, yeah, I like the idea of kind of creating the roadmap for the client as much as us. You know, I the, the things that kind of popped to mind right there is like, yeah, what are the problems we have with the clients when they're rolling on a PTO? Well, we find out they have six different PTO yeah. p- uh, programs for eight employees yeah. or 20 employees. And they don't even follow them. And none of them, the actual system they say they have is not what they're actually doing. Yeah. And then the next one is, okay, yeah, well, you wanted this to be the way, but you're not really willing to – well, not everybody has the ability to log in or what, you know, yeah. whatever it may be. You know, so the understanding what that roadmap and that brokenness in that process is um, is super. It can be super challenging yeah. for their for their enactment of, of that actually happening. And once we once we know that, then we can start to identify the exceptions to the rules, because then a lot of times we, there may be a solution for those exceptions as well, and they're not really as exceptional as you thought they were. Right. Um, or maybe yep, those are true exceptions, and now's a good time to think through. A different way to handle those exceptions. And, you know, that happens a lot of times, especially, you know, to, you know, that PTO, PTO, yeah, PTO that's a big area clear. that we see, Hey, you know what? All of my employees follow this plan, but Harry over here, he's been here with me forever. And so he follows this other plan. That's great. That doesn't necessarily mean it's an exception in our world. We can handle Harry the same way, just with Harry's own set of rules, because we know what our, our limitations are on software. And that's not one of them. Uh, and, and so that's the things that, you know, we want to, and, and our whole goal at works is really to infiltrate every area of your business as it relates to employees and managers and, and systems. Um, we don't want to stop with, yeah, we got people paid and they're all good. Or you know, maybe we're punching time as a you know, that next level up. Or maybe my employees are onboarding electronically. Or maybe even I'm you know, doing uh, benefits. You know, like all of our stuff that we do is great, but we want to help more than that. Because there's yeah. always a place that we can identify that is, you know what, your CFO wants these level of reports that you're – uh, HR team is taking a couple hours a week to put together. How do we automate that? How can I fix that for you? Yeah. Right. You already have the tools. How can I make that better? And uh, and that's where just implementing software alone never, ever, ever gets you. Ever. Right. Well, what I what I like, what, you know, our goal with, you know, whether or not we're implementing this software or, or you're talking about on the accounting side or whatever, our, our still our plan is to make this, the, the whole, this whole s- side of things just simpler. How do you, you know, you probably don't realize you have six PTO plans or you right. do when you know that was cumbersome. Well, how do you unwind that? What should I be doing? You know, if I am looking at that CFO once his reports, okay, what reports are you getting and why, what's that you want to see? How do I automate that data? That's our role, which is why this is not a software conversation. It's not a, even a reactive soft, you know, it's a, let's talk through what you're doing and create that roadmap to success down the road. What is your end goal? I want to simplify all yeah. these things. I want them all to talk to one another. I want to get data that I can actually use and, and not waste, not be just total. I don't have to spend a bunch of time recreating the stuff that is just for, that I, that I should be able to automate. Yeah. Well, whenever we started this conversation, I said, hey, Matt, what are we talking about today? And you said, is software enough? And I think the yeah. answer to that question is no, it's no. not. We ran into this whenever we implemented a relatively large CRM. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it was a very big force for our sales team. And <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended, right? Um, but it turned, it was a, this can do anything that you want. That there you go. Good and a bad answer. And it's like, <laughs> oh man, that's really cool. And then we got it and we started setting, doing all the out of the box setup then. And it was the very first thing after that I was like, well, now what else should we be doing? <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. And there was, there's now there's a billion consultants that are on, that, that you help it, people uh, implement that platform. But I didn't really think through the, the need for somebody to actually help us understand what we should be doing. Correct. We knew what we wanted to do. We know what we needed to do, but we didn't really know what we should be doing from a best practice. Where to start. Yeah. Like what's our walk before our run step. That thing was a, it's a behemoth and it is an awesome software, but you, 
you need to go into it with the understanding that it can do anything in the universe you want it to do, yeah. which is a very scary part place to be in when you're a little tiny little accounting and uh, HR firm. You're like, where do I start? And yeah. Like, it's big. Yeah. And so that was, and, and they, and, and they have all the, the training is out there. Like it's, well, they would tell you, Hey, well, yeah. What do you need help with? Yeah. I need help with understanding what I need help with. You're right. You know, yeah. please like, start. What do I very, tell yeah. me? I need, I want somebody to tell me what I don't know. I want somebody to tell me what I could be doing better. I want somebody to come in, understand what I'm trying to accomplish from an organizational perspective, and then pair that up with solutions. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm looking for in a software provider. And it's not really software. And I mean, technically, does it fall under SaaS? Yes, it does. But man, there's so many people that just don't do this stuff well. Yeah, and from I'll, my perspective, and I'll say, you know, we've been fortunate enough to have a couple of the of our um, enterprise. Uh, we use HubSpot. Um, I thought their onboarding of that was very well. Here's what yeah. you should be doing. Yeah. Here's reporting you should be having. Here's how the walkthrough of that works is, and that is, my expectation is similar. I I would expect us to go. Yes, the software you're using, whatever payroll system you're coming from, is very similar to ours. However, you never got the guidance to let you know where to go next or what you should be doing. How do, how does simplifying really work? Um, and that's where we really, I feel like we do a really good job, but also it, it's really important for us to have that collaborate collaboration with the client of where they're trying to go, because I don't want to be reactive and just answering their question. Like, Hey, I need to know how to do a PTO policy. That's not the goal. What are you trying to accomplish with the PTO policy? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and honestly, from, from our perspective, that's the fun part. Those are the fun conversations to have. It, it, it is absolutely critically necessary that every single day at a hundred percent success rate, we process your employees payroll and everybody gets paid. That is absolutely critical. If that doesn't happen, we are failing in a big way. But to say that that is winning for us That's is an extremely boring. low bar that right. is not exciting in any way whatsoever. Make sure you people get paid is kind of boring. That is the floor of expectations, yeah. not the not the not the ceiling. Uh, and, and it's it's and I think about that from a software perspective. Um, if you're looking to implement something, and you have a good understanding of the scope of everything that you're trying to do and how it infiltrates your entire organization, and you have the right people in place to implement those things. Uh, Make sure you set clear expectations of what that looks like. You know, in our world, when we go into a new client, we're not saying, like you mentioned earlier, that everything is going to be fixed on day two. Right. And we're going to get everything apples to apples on day zero. And over the next however long it takes you to implement, that's that's when things are going to get fixed. That's when the outcome really happens. But it ha- it starts with where do we where do we expect things to get fixed, how quickly do we expect them to get fixed, and how much time, resources, all those things are we willing to devote to getting those things fixed? I think for us, getting some clarity around what, you know, what their pains are salt their, they have today is important. Understanding what their end-up goals have to be, you know, what they're trying to get to is important. And then for us, understanding that we can only implement and change to the, at the speed that by which they're willing to absorb that change. Yeah. And so we want to work alongside them as they want to go down that change. But it's super hard. And I think for most of us, as an owner, I know that I struggle with this. I want to be faster. I want to be. You yeah. know, I want to get done. But also, I have all the different people to, to integrate into that change is super. It's super hard. Um, it is. It is. It is a challenge to roll out a a change. It's it, it's not suffer. It's it's hard to roll out change. change. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, we're th- we're a thirty-ish person company, and if we're implementing something that is wide sweeping and there is the actual setup data migration implementation whatever it takes to get the software the tool built and then there is that's the easy part adoption. then there is the and yeah it's the adoption for your employees the training for the employees and getting it rolled out to the team that's the part that's going to take three times as long as what we thought it ever was correct uh, and that's the part that if you have some clear expectations from top down you know, all, all sides where, you know what, this is, this is going to move at the speed of your people's ability to receive, implement and, and absorb. Uh, then you can start to really understand how, how big of a deal that, that migration is going to be. And I, I always encourage people think through those things way before you sign the contract, because if it turns out, Hey, you know what, this is going to be a really great outcome, uh, but it's going to take me three years to do it. And I know that in three years I want to sell my business or whatever it may be. Well, well, then you well, maybe you don't maybe you shouldn't maybe you don't need Correct. to, 
Um, and that's why I say start with the end of mind, have clear expectations along the way, make sure you get the right people involved. I, I, you know, I start thinking this from the from our team standpoint with regards to, okay, as we're talking through somebody through an implementation of change, A, I want to get really good understanding about what they're using now, what their pains are going through today are. But I really want to understand who are the people involved in the process to help us, to, for us to work alongside with you, yeah. for us to identify the plan, come up with the adoption rollout. How does that actual happen? Um, getting everybody's buy into that is, is huge. Yeah. I, I think through some firms right now who've gone through this process with some practice management software and they're struggling with it. They don't know where to start, right? They needed somebody working alongside. The software can do what they need to do. Yeah. They don't know where to begin. And I think it's similar to, to us when we do a payroll or um, we're, up, we're upgrading somebody's you know point of sale system, whatever it may be. They have to understand what that impact is. But Creating a good roadmap is, is super important and understand what that realistic expectations of change are going to be. Yeah. I think to wrap things up, I think it's important to, just to reiterate that software by itself is not going to be enough to make an impact in your organization. The successful implementation, training, and use of that software across your entire organization um, does have the ability to drive things forward and a lot of times in a big way. Uh, and, and you have to make sure that you're counting the cost of what it's going to take, not necessarily dollars, but all resources all in uh, to make that change happen, that you get the right people on, uh, on the project, that you have the right people owning the project, uh, and they have the competency to actually get things done. Uh, and when you have all that stuff, it's really fun. It is. <laughs> it's, it's enjoyable. Uh, it's something new. It's something different. And uh, uh, it's always good. Yep. Agree. Excellent. Uh, well, if you guys are out there listening, thank you very much. We really appreciate your time. If there's anything that we can help you with, feel free to reach out to us. You can email us at one step better at works.com. Thanks and have a great day. Thanks for listening to the One Step Better podcast. I'd really appreciate it if you would take some time to rate us five stars on your podcast player of choice and make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you never miss out on another episode. Thanks and have a great day.